now. Um, the title is Living in the End Time. And then the sort of the subtitle is Christian Lifestyle and Last Day Events. Just, uh, I guess, an introduction. Uh, again, if most of you haven't been aware, we, we've been doing a week of prayer. Um, and yeah, just it, it's been such a blessing um, spending this quality time in the evenings, uh, doing the readings, but also having um, healthy discussions. Um, if you haven't got the readings, um, please go download them um, and, and have a read of them. Um, today's uh, reading is a, a lot of it, uh, if not all of it, is around what Ellen White has said and also her experiences. So, um, yeah, let's just have another word of prayer before we dive into um, this reading. Our mighty Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we've had this week of prayer this week. We pray that you may continue to bless us as we continue with the readings or the reading this, this Sabbath. Bring us closer to you, Lord. And may we just be reminded about where we are living and in the time that we are living. We pray that you may bless everyone that's here and that listens to this message and this reading. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. Um, so yeah, the, the reading starts off with a verse and the verse is Titus 2, verse 11 and four, to 14. It's Titus 2, verse 11 to 14. And it says this, For the grace of God and that so for the grace of God that brings salvation and has, and has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. The scripture tell, teaches a very different lesson from that which is presented in the, words of, in the words of many who profess to believe the gospel. We are pressed to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, and to look for this glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It continues and says, Some, of, some have made an objection by my work, being Ellen White, because I teach that it is our duty to be looking for Christ's pers personal appearing in the clouds of heaven. They have said, you would think that the day of the Lord was right upon us to hear Mrs. White speak in reference to the coming of Christ. He has been preaching on that same subject for the last 40 years. And the Lord has not yet come. This very ob objection might have been brought against the words of Christ himself. I, I, I thought about this a, a bit as I was reflecting on it this week. Um, and it's amazing that like Christ, probably Ellen White experienced a lot of difficulties um, a lot of hardship, and as it says here, you know, people used to tell her that, I mean, this is 40 years later as well, that why is she still preaching the same message? And I thought about why that might be the case, and the one thing that really popped into mind is probably, you know, it was her relationship with God, um, and through her relationship with God, you know, it produced this, this un, 
unstaggering faith. Um, and I just thought it was so powerful to just reflect on that. Um, the reading continues and says, He said by the mouth of the beloved disciple, Behold, I come quickly. And John responds, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Jesus spoke these words as a warning and encouragement to his people. And why should we not heed them? The Lord has said that this, that it is the faithful who will be found watching and waiting for him. Now, we know that the exact time of Christ's second coming is not revealed. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 36, But of that day, the hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven. But he gave us signs of his coming and said Matthew, in Matthew 24, 33, So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. He bade them as the signs of his coming should appear in Luke 21 verse 28. Look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. And in view of these things, the apostle wrote, You, but you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of day. Since you know nor not the hour of Christ's coming, we must live soberly and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ gave up himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous for good works. His people are to preserve their peculiar character and as his representatives. There is a work for every one of them to, this work is for every one of them to do. The rich bring their means, the honored their influence, the learned their wisdom, the poor their virtue. If they would be effective workers with God, they are to bring themselves into a right relation with God as they may reflect the light of the glory of God that shines bright, that shines in the face of Jesus Christ. Um, this is another wow moment for me during this lesson, uh, during this reading. And one thing that really stuck out for me is that, and I mean, I list a few things here. It says the rich, the honored, the learned, the poor. It kind of hasn't missed out really anyone, which, I took from each one of us, no matter where we at, no matter what circumstances are around us, has the opportunity to share, to be effective workers for God. We can't use any of our circumstances for, as excuses. And for me, this was a really powerful thing. But sometimes we can do that. We yeah, we, we decide, oh, wait, I'm not good enough. I'm not a public speaker, so I can't, you know, be an effective worker for God. But is that what God is calling you to do? So, yeah, something this to continue to reflect on. Um, the reading continues. We read of a class who put far off the day of the coming of Jesus but upon such his coming will be a, as a thief in the night. 
and they will be suddenly overtaken with destruction. How many are, are there are who are willing to be rocked to sleep in a cradle of carnal security, but it is time for us to wake out of sleep. Says the apostle, we are not of the night nor the darkness, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. We should be awake to discern the signs of the times, to give warning to the people. There are many in the world who seek to quiet the alarm of the people who say peace, peace, when there is no peace. But we should take but we should take an opposite course from this. We, there are many who say to the aroused people, do not, be, do not disturb yourselves. Go on in godlessness. Go on glorifying yourselves and live in pleasure. The day of the Lord is not at hand. Do, did not Christ have an object in view when he said this? Behold, I come quickly. Did he not see that his church would need to keep the solemn events in mind? Shall we say with the last day scoffers, where is the promised, or promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of, crea of the creation. I do not mean to be this with this class. I mean to arouse men with the message of Christ near coming. It's quite a sober, sobering thought. Um, once again, you know, we're... I think we can get sometimes very complacent. Um, I remember my mom growing up with the same message that, you know, she taught us and, and what was presented in the church that, or the church that we were attending. You know, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Uh, for most of us who were brought up in the church, this is a message that we know very too well. But has that made us complacent? Has that um, caused us to kind of take it easy on, on certain areas of our, of our lives, but also certain areas of which we share the gospel with others? Um, again, these are just thoughts that keep on you know, coming into my mind as I had been reading and, and reflecting on, on this reading. Um, like Ellen White, I do. I myself do not want to be in in that class that she mentioned. I want to be able to arouse people to the message of Christ near coming. The next part of the the reading is entitled "A Great Responsibility." Those who have a, a knowledge of present truth are under a great responsibility before the world. They are to warn the people of the coming judgments. They are to represent Christ to the people. They are not to go out deploring their, their condition, talking of their darkness and murmuring and complaining of the hardness of the way. They are to lift up their minds to God, open the door to, of their hearts to Jesus, and let him come in and abide with them. We must have Christ enthroned in the, in the heart, that the soul temple may be cleansed from every defilement. The, com the soon coming of our Savior must be a living reality to us. The question of all importance for this time is, 
How is it with my soul? Am I seeking to reiterate the words of Christ? Am I teaching my children that they have souls to save? That peace and holiness must be a part of their life? Am I teaching them to place their hands in the hands of Christ that he might may guide them. We have most earnest work to do. We have no time to waste in drinking at empty cisterns that can hold no water. We should come to Christ without delay for the water of life. We should diligently study the Bible Though the study of the Bible is the greatest importance to us, or it should very much be, the scriptures are able to make us make to make men wise unto salvation. Yet how few spend time to search the word of God. The men and women are all of absorbed in the things of this perishing earth they they are building their hopes upon worthless foundations and writing their names in the sand even those who profess to be followers of christ do not heed do not heed his injunction I mean, how important is it to be diligent in studying the Word of God? Even more so now. Um, For me, this has just brought out again the, the importance of the Word of God and how powerful it is. Um how it has the power to change us and to give us new hearts. Um, We can't access that power without the word of God, without the spirit in us. Um, So again, just uh, um, another powerful point in this reading. It continues and says, God gives us his his rich blessings to enjoy and he expects us to bring forth fruit to his glory but many neglect his work they do not make a full surrender to his will there are many who seem to feel that to think of god and heavenly things tends to make men gloomy and desponding that it is detrimental to health to permit the mind to dwell upon religious subjects. When in my youth, God opened the scriptures to my mind, giving me light upon the truths of his word. I went forth to proclaim to others the precious news of salvation. My brother wrote to me and said this, I beg of you not do not disgrace the family. I will do anything for you if you will not go out as a preacher. Wow. Imagine if Ellen White had listened to her brother. Imagine where we would be as a church. Imagine the the content in which we would not have to aid the Bible um, and yeah I mean for a family member to do that you know it's the devil is so cunning sometimes and imagine again if if Ellen White had listened I like what she um, says in the next paragraph and she says, disgrace the family, I replied. It can, can it disgrace the family to preach 
for me to, sorry, I'll start again. Can it disgrace the family for me to preach Christ and him crucified? If you would give me all the gold your house could hold, I would not cease giving my testimony for God. I have the respect. I have to, I have suspect unto the recommends of the reward. I will not keep silent for when God imputes his light to me, he means that I shall diffuse it to others according to my ability. Did not the priests and rulers come to the disciples and give, command them to cease preaching in the name of Christ? They shut the faithful men in prison but the angel of the Lord came to them and released them that they may, might speak the words of life to the people. She ends this by saying, this is our work. This is our work. The, the next part is entitled, Truth as it is in Jesus. We are to present the truth as it is in Jesus. Christ came into the world to save sinners. For 30 years, he lived our example. He endured insult, humiliation, reproach, rejection, rejection and death. Yet he still lives. He is a living savior. He has ascended on high to make intercession for us. Just before his crucifixion, Jesus prayed that his disciples might be one with him as he was one with his father. And you can find this incredible prayer in John 17. It is indeed a, a, a possibility that is it indeed a possibility that sinful fallen man may so may be brought into such exalted relationship with Christ, such an such a union with Christ will bring light and peace and comfort to our souls. It's something that I've been reflecting on a little bit um, again this past, probably more past couple of weeks. And again, last night as I was reading about um, Abram getting promised, um, I think you find it in Genesis 12 and God, you know, promises all these things to Abram. And it's awesome that God wants to use us sinners um, in the completion of his work. You know, at a snap of a finger or even a, a loud shout or voice, God can do all the work by himself. Um, I think it's really an incredible um yeah, just incredible that he wants to use us. And with Abraham, I mean, it was through his lineage, his line, that Jesus came out of. Um, and yeah, the, the reading continues and says this, when he went to heaven, he told his disciples, it is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Who would not have the comforter in times of trial? Tell the world, or tell of the love of Christ. Talk of his power. And you may have a heaven in this world to go to 
heaven in. Respond to the light of God and you will be like a watered garden. Your health will be spring will spring forth speedily. Your light will rise in obscurity and the glory of the Lord will be your reward. Amen and amen. Um, what a, 